that's not the right way to do it. You need to put 3% or else you'll blow the house up. And then you got another guy going, what's SH? What does SH mean? So. Hey, what's up guys? Mike here owns Pressure Washing, Entrepreneur Army. And one of the questions I get asked most of the time, uh, most frequently, uh, is when did you decide to go full time? So it's kind of not really the most simple answer. Um, and also people ask, you know, what made me to start my own business? So, ever since I was a kid, I mean, ever since I can remember, going to the corner store with my grandma and buying Swedish fish for a penny a piece, and I remember the lady, the place was called Sissus, and this was in South Philly. It's where my grandmother lived. I'm from Northeast, and my mom would drop me off, me and my brother, at my grandma's, and she'd watch us, but she'd walk us down to the corner store, and a place called Sisters in South Philly. Now the woman at the time was probably in her 70s. And this was 30 years, close to 30 years ago. So um, anyway, she would count them out individually. And I just thought it was awesome. You know, like she, she works at a candy store. That's what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> so uh, long story short, as I started getting older, um, I remember probably about eight, nine years old, there was this candy called Warheads. And I think it was a dollar for a pack of them. And I think there was five in a pack, right? So that was, five, you know, that would be like 20 cents a piece, right? So I, f I went to Costco and I remember for like, I, I don't know, it was like less than 10 bucks, I bought this big box and I think there was like, I don't know, I wanna say like 20 packs in this box, maybe 30, 40. Either way, it was about 10 bucks. And I remember I saved up $10 and bought this box, all right? And then I went to school and was selling the individual wrapped warheads. So you open the pack up and you get these little individual packed warheads. And I was selling them for a quarter a piece. So that means for every five I sold, for every four I sold, I made a dollar. And I had probably about a hundred pieces. And I don't know, I made close to like a hundred bucks. And ever since then, I just was like, whoa, this is awesome. And then as I got older and I started getting jobs, you know, I did lifeguarding, all different kinds of stuff. Um, You know, I'd make money and I'd earn it, I'd work hard. But I always thought back to that, like, you take something, you, you put money up front to get a better value, and then you sell it to people at a convenience price. And that's just always had that in my blood with CDs, and as I got older with other things, it kind of led me down the wrong path. But, so, you know, I always had that in my blood. But just recently, a little over three years ago, um, I was working for a company and worked my ass off, made my way up to the top, but wasn't wasn't enough money. Like it was enough and it was great, but at that time, it wasn't what I wanted in life, and I wasn't really seeing me going much further. And it was all like the political bull crap and people kissing ass to get up and get more money and they weren't doing nothing. Like they really didn't do much work. Like, so it wasn't a work ethic type raised place. Although I did make my way up by working hard, just wasn't that type of place. Like it was more of a who you knew and who liked you and stuff like that. So I kind of started hitting a block and a wall and I was like, this isn't what I want to do forever. I mean, it never was what I want to do forever, but I hit a point in my life where I was like, I need to start my own sh stuff for real. Like I need to get my feet wet, get something started, and then it boom, you know, then I'll be good. Now don't ask me why I chose power washing. I know some of the reasons was 
I always did like playing with water as a kid, but that ain't the only reason. I uh, used to do tons of jobs. Painting was one of them. And I remember pressure washing this guy's roof. I mean, up on the tiles, blasting away. And I enjoyed it. It wasn't the right way to do it. And it was the only way I knew, but I did enjoy doing it. I was the only one of the crew I remember that was willing to climb up on the roof, on the steep roof, up there all day. And I was the only one willing to do it and I loved it. I was like, hell yeah, I'll do it. And I did a lot of them roofs like that. So I always had that kind of background. So I was like, that's a great idea. I was like, let me do power washing. I decided to start YouTubing power washing because I don't know what to charge. I just don't. So I YouTube power washing and I watched all kinds of videos. And I'm sure if obviously if you're watching this video, you can relate. So I ran across all kinds of dudes. Then I came across this channel, Dan's Vlog. Dan's Vlog showed me how to do soft washing. All right. He showed me about the chemical injector. You put it in bleach, spray it with some Dawn dish soap, and boom, you're out of there. Bada bing, bada boom. But guess what? I started realizing, wait a minute, those are vinyl houses. And then where I'm in my area, I don't have vinyl houses. So... I kept Googling and Googling and Googling. I started finding forums, all right? And that's when I started learning about how to... I don't want to bash Dan's vlog because he helped me out a lot, but he doesn't do it 100% correctly. It works for him, and he's out there making money, but it's not the most correct way. So I... And let's get this straight. On forums, you got everybody. You got one guy saying, Hey, that's not the right way to do it. You need to put 3%... Or else you'll blow the house up. And then you got another guy going, well, What's SH? What does SH mean? So it's just all kinds of different angles and crap flinging across the internet. And But I learned, you know, I took what I needed and left the rest. Then I started getting into Facebook groups and I started meeting other people. And that's when I started learning other people and YouTube channels. And I started learning about business and how I needed to like, make myself efficient so it wasn't just about doing the work you had to be efficient so you can't be up there spraying 50 50 or a three or four percent mix out of a pump up sprayer you need to get a 12 volt or a booster pump and then i researched all that and i went and ended up going with 12 volt and that's still what i do i still don't know which way route to go other than that i'm happy with the 12 volt and that's just how i am so the business is slow in the beginning, just doesn't work out, all right? And I was still working full time. And that's why I think I was successful was because I didn't just jump out of my job. I stayed at my job, did this on the side, tried to build my Google page up, tried to build my Facebook presence up, tried to get as many customers and knowledge as I could. And then I started accumulating equipment. I didn't have the best equipment. If you go back and watch my videos, you'll see some of the equipment I had. So if you're just starting out, don't compare yourself to someone who's far along. You can learn from them, but don't get discouraged is what I'm trying to say. So I just, you know, jobs were far and few between. Just wasn't getting them, was not getting them. But I stayed with it. I stayed positive because I remembered why I want to do this. It's because I'm sick and tired of working for people on pennies, on the dollars that they make. So, and also another thing is you're working with other people who don't give a damn about you. They don't give a damn about the job. They don't give a damn about anything about the job. They just go get their money and leave and get paid. And, that, and that's fine. But guess what? I'm not busting my ass because in my nature, I just, that's how I'm a hard worker. So I, I refuse to sit or well, refuse to work my ass off while people are sitting around collecting the same money that I am. Not happening. So, so I was working full time at another company. All right. And as much as I did not like it and as much as I wanted to quit, I just knew it was not time. 
And yeah, it was hard working full time. And then I started accumulating more and more work as time went on. And then, you know, you got that guy on your shoulder saying, hey, quit, quit, quit. And the other guy going, no, 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 it ain't, it ain't time yet. And then the reason how I knew was when it was getting to the point where I had a hard time scheduling work and I started, I was saving money up. I had a good bit of money tucked away at this point and it gave me motivation to tuck money away. So I saved money a good amount, the most I ever had in my life, put that away, started scheduling work, and it came to a point where was it, oh, look at that, was it either Owens Pressure Washing or was it the other place? And the balance just started leaning more towards Owens Pressure Washing, and I knew I had to make a decision. Either I jump in or I'm going to start affecting this, and I don't want to affect this. This is what, this is what I want. This is my future. So I put my two weeks in, left, and you know, it hasn't been easy since, but I'm glad that I did it and I've become a lot more successful since doing it. But I didn't just do it. I had success before I did it. Then I knew I had the courage and the motivation to do it because I had money saved. I started building a brand, started accumulating equipment, started scheduling jobs, and then that's when it was time and I attacked. And like I said, it wasn't always easy. Um, there was actually a point where I wanted to quit, throw it all in, and just maybe just go back to working normally. And uh, it was when I uh, unfortunately lost my brother. Uh, he passed away in June of 2019. And I mean, that was like, the closest person and when I say that we weren't close at the time because he lived still lived in Philly I'm down here in Florida but growing up I mean he was three years older than me I always looked up to him and uh it just was tough it was tough now I mean there was stuff I haven't told anybody anyone like i that's the type of things I would tell him and uh just you know those of you that have brothers or sisters, you know how it is. Your family bond, and I'm sure some of you guys lost people you love. But it was a depressing time, and just wanted to quit. And I wanted to just feel sorry for myself. And uh, life wasn't fair. And why would they? Why would this happen to me? And but uh, it didn't last long, you know. I mean, I'm, I still miss him, but what I mean is that self-pity didn't last long because I knew that if I didn't keep pushing, everything I worked for would be gone. And, that, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted to succeed in life. And I knew with him gone, it wasn't going to be easy. But I knew I had that extra motivation to know that life is short and it could end at any moment. So... If you think like that, it makes you, it makes you more grateful for life and the little things that you do have. And if you're just in the back of a station wagon wheeling around a two and a half gallon per minute, keep pushing. Because if you keep pushing, the next thing you know, you got a three gallon a minute, then a four, and then an eight. And then you got people looking up to you saying, damn, I wish I would start. No matter where you are, there's always someone that's just starting out the day after you. And it will be looking up to you because you're in someone's driveway making 50 bucks. And people always bash the 99 guy, but in the beginning, you have to you have to take what you can get because you're learning experience. Then you're going to learn, okay, that's not enough money. I need to make this much. Stuff starts breaking. You learn you got to charge accordingly for that kind of stuff. And you just got to have that energy. It's not about what you... There's a good saying. Uh, it's not the tools you work with. It's the work you do with your tools something like that but um yeah so it's if you if you ever get that feeling of uh self-pity and you ain't gonna make it just keep pushing because guess what if it was easy everybody would do it and i'm not just talking about power washing or soft washing i'm talking about anything you look at people like Grant Cardone, you think he feels sorry for himself? No, and any one of us can be to that level. It's just a matter of what you do with your time and, you know, your plans and your if you're actually going to execute. Because anybody can say they're going to do something, you just got to get down and do it.
And like I said, it has not been easy since, but I've been able to focus a lot more time and energy on my business. And then also along with creating YouTube videos and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm very happy that I did so because it's been working out for me. And I know I'm not the biggest and the best, but guess what? I have financial freedom, not like millionaire status, but if I want to go take a little road trip to Key West one day, I can do that. If I want to not work for a couple of days, I can do that. Although there is times where I can't, but you know what I mean? Like I'm able to be my own boss. I'm not in it. I'm not in a trap where I'm just making very minimum money working hard. Now it's, I work as much as I want and I'm making as much money as I want on each job. And you get to a point where you're able to charge a premium price and say, Hey, tough stuff. If you want my services, you have to, pay what I'm asking. I, I might be double the amount of the other guy, but guess what? I'm going to make sure I do a good job. I'm not going to mess your stuff up. And if I do, I'm, I'm, I'm accountable to my name and I'll make it right. So, you know, in life, I always notice when stressful times happen and you feel like you got so much stuff you got to do and it's just weighing you down. You just got to attack each thing as it comes. Boom. Boom, do it right away, do it right away. Because instead of a million things being on your back, you gotta just take that stuff off, look at it, and bang out the first thing, then the second thing, then the third. And it's just a lot, of, it just, it feels like weight off your shoulders. So when a task comes, I do it, and then I just jump to the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. So that's how you get stuff done without being too stressed out. You can't get overwhelmed. Same thing with doing estimates. If you're doing a big apartment complex, look at it as 20 different little houses. How much would you charge to do that little house? Okay, times it by 20. It's that simple. You can take some money off. Yeah, because you're in the same place. You're going back to the same place for a day or two or whatever, three days. But you can't get overwhelmed. It's going to happen. But you got to stay cool. Don't jump the gun. And it's not always about speed, guys. So you got to, you know, take your time, do good work. If you work hard, treat people right, do good work, you, nothing can stop you, nothing. And be straightforward and honest. If you can't do something, you can't do it. Just bottom line. But that's how I started my business. I hope that answers some of the questions. If you have one, drop it below.